Before we get started, let's tune up. Let's take an A first. Get that A and tune it up. G. 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 And the low E. There's your A again. Okay. I'd like to speak to you about 
bringing forth more of your creative power. And this creative power is tapped more if we go inside of the right side of the brain. So let me briefly give you an idea of what the right side does. It's the intuitive side of our personality. It's the part of our brain that tells us uh, how to do things without words, how to do things with hunches, how to do things by feeling. And this is very important for us to stand, understand musically because so much, so many, so much of the time, what we're doing is playing what we've learned, what we've, what we've rehearsed, um, patterns that we know really well. We have a tendency not to rely on our feelings so much. So when you tune into the right brain, what you're really doing is just playing your hunches. And the truth of the matter is, your hunches are always right. They're always right. If you follow your instincts and you follow your intuitive sense, you'll be okay. But if you use the left side of your brain to try to play music, chances are you're going to come up short because the left side likes symbols all the time. It wants to know exactly what it's doing. And you can't know exactly what you're doing when you're creating music. That's not the fun of it. That's not really the reality of it. There's an old saying that you don't know what you're, you don't know that you're creating when you're creating because if you knew you were creating when you were creating, you wouldn't be creating. Now, you can run that back on your tape and figure that out. The truth of the matter is you just have to tune into what's happening inside of you. Get in touch with that. Too many of us don't. We study too hard. We practice too many long hours on scales and arpeggios. This is the most boring thing on the planet Earth. So let's try to get to some music for a change. Now, how do we do that? Well, one of the first exercises that at least works for me it's called gesturing improvising, which means that you just go all over the neck of your instrument any way that you want to, anywhere that you want to, playing anything that you want to. Now, just understand that this is create creativity at its very basic level. We're not trying to play any great musical composition or, or a great symphony. We just want to make music. I recommend that you close your eyes, because what you can do is shut off your symbol system by closing your eyes. You don't know you're in the fifth position. You don't know you're in any of your favorite positions. Don't start in your favorite positions because you're used to them and you're going to fall into old patterns. And this is what you don't want to do. You just want to be able to make some music. Okay? Let's see what happens if we just start playing. This is how I would do it when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Keep going, don't stop. Okay, now I'm used to doing it, so it's not, not so difficult for me. But those of you who are just starting, try quarter notes. Try simple quarter notes. Try closing your eyes. Why? Because your eyes will close, will help you to relinquish that symbol system, as, as opposed to looking in the fifth position or look, looking in positions that you're really sure of. So what do you do? Just sit around and start any place. Just put your fingers down and go for it. You just play quarter notes. Just letting it go wherever it wants to go. Notice how I started to get myself up into the higher position. Okay? So if I'm up there and I feel like staying, stay up there and work around you. If you feel like coming back, if your intuition tells you to come back, go for it. It's not really hard. It's really simple. And it's really fun. And the thing about it is, when you get done, you should feel refreshed. Think about this. When is the last time you had fun practicing? When's the last time you had fun playing? And the thing about it is, when you're done... You should feel refreshed because it's creative. And anything that's creative makes you feel good. If you don't feel good, then you've worked too hard at it. Now, why do I tell you all this? Because this is what you have to carry into musical situations when you're playing. You have to be relaxed and you just have to let it come out. 
Not playing ideas and patterns that you know for sure, that's not being creative. Remember, we're talking about creativity here. We're not talking about something that's set in a pattern. Okay, some of the things that we can do to bring out this creativity, to break the symbol system that we're so used to. Let's just take four strings. Let's take the top four strings first and just try playing on four strings. Maybe tape up the other two. Then play on the middle four. Then play on the bottom four. Maybe play on the top two. I used to do an exercise like this. Try to create music on the top E string and the bottom E string. And when I would do it on the gig, people would think it was great. They would say, oh, wow, what's that? You see? So it, it has a way of projecting. Just take four strings. See how bizarre it sounds? That's what we're after. We don't want to make a lot of musical sense. We just want to make some momentum happen. After a while, you can start to plug all of this into your tunes, into songs, into pieces, into anything. Now, let me give you an example. I'm just going to play off the top of my head. I promise you, I didn't work on this stuff. down and trying to make music where I am at. By the way, let me make one thing pretty clear to you. It's not that I'm telling you not to study, because it's a very important part of, of playing music. You have to know what music's about. You have to know the science of music. But the problem I noticed over and over again is people become too scientific. I mean, we all know the scales and we all keep telling ourselves, oh, play this scale over that. But the thing about it is, what about the musical part about it? Of it. What about the melodic sense? This is the thing that you want to develop. That's why these exercises help you bring out that melodic sense in you. So keep studying, keep doing your scales, and keep doing your arpeggios. But as you go on every day, practice a little bit creating. You have to work on your creativity. It's like muscle building. You have to work on certain muscles to get them strong. So let's play a blues, okay? I'll play a little rhythm for you. Start gesturing. We're in B flat. Don't think, just start now. One, two, three, four. My turn.
feel to you. It's supposed to feel good. If it doesn't feel good, try it again. Okay, a few other things that you should do. Tape it every day. Every time you play something creative in these creative sessions, you can hear it back in your tape. A lot of times when creativity is gone by us, we miss it. But in your taping session, you will find that you'll be a lot happier when you hear yourself back because you have a tendency sometimes to think that nothing is happening. I know I felt a lot better when I started taping the gigs I was on. Check it out by listening to the tape every couple of days. Like, tape a couple of days and maybe not listen to it. Then go back and listen to it and you'll find how good you are, how easy it is. And you'll begin to find a direction. Keep your eyes and your ears open for a direction. What way do you want to go? It will show itself on the tape. It might be just a little embryo, but grab that embryo, grab that seed, and start developing it. You remember that anything you do takes time to develop. I mean, these styles that we play, the style and the technique, which are the same, take years to, uh, to uh, investigate, take years to develop. So, but it might come from a little embryo. Remember the great artists, man, just used to, used to use the sketchbooks as just ideas for springboards for greater, greater pieces. So that's what you have to concentrate on. Okay? Try your gesturing every day. Let me know how you're making out. Okay, at this point I'd like to tell you a little bit about motifs. I'd like to compose a tune with you, and a little bit later in the video we're going to have definite things to hand out to you. What is a motif? It's the repetition of a musical idea, really. Something like this. Okay, anytime you have something that catches your fancy, continue with it. It could be simple seconds. Now, what happens is if you continue the motif and listen to the motif, you once again shut off the assemble system that I was telling you about earlier. You no longer rely on what you know. This motif carries you into new areas. So let's see if we can't find a, a motif and maybe make a tune out of it, like... copy that one myself to see what happens. You just wrote it soon. A simple motif. That's what you have to start thinking about. Let's go back into the left brain now and develop our right hand a little bit. Talk a little bit about right hand technique. I'll give you some of the uh, tricks that I, I do, which are not really tricks, just a bunch of hard work, really. I would take any scale or any motif, whatever it might be, and I would learn how to pick it all down. Simple G scale. Then I would play the scale all up picking. Two notes at a time. Four notes develops a tremolo. Triplets down up down. Up down up. Now that's awkward, but that's good because in playing situations sometimes your pick hand is in awkward places and you need a lot of strength, you see?
Okay, this is a, a a sweep exercise, actually. I take, I used to do this open string all the time. I take four notes, four, four strings, sorry. And just go starting on the D, G, B, E. All down, and then backwards, all up. By the way, that's how I hold my pick. You see that first finger has just got it locked in. Oh, can you see? Now then, you can practice your sweeps. All down. Then turn your, turn your wrist a little bit when you come back. Middle four strings. Bottom four. And that leads you into the sweep kind of picking. Say, for instance, you have four notes. Four, uh, you have a chord. Now, when you get it really ripping, and you add other notes. And it all comes from beginning to understand how to play those four strings. Learn how to sweep four strings. Learn how to sweep them sweep them uh, ascending and descending. And then you can add more strings to your sweeps. For instance, if you take a G minor and you sweep backwards. And then you fill out the chord in the bottom here with the D and the D flat. And add G. Now watch. It takes a little time to get it coordinated, but once you get it coordinated, it sounds like this. So that's how you start sweeping. You can do complicated chords. One of my favorite chords. G minor 11. Now add the D and the B flat on the bottom. So now you got C, D, B flat. A, and then you add D, B flat, G, so that when you put it together, just remember that you're lining up chord shapes, or arpeggio shapes. G minor 6, add the G minor on top. G, B flat, D, F, E, add G, B flat, D, add the F, minor, minor major, minor seven, Minor six. All all little shapes. G minor. A. Pull off the G. Now you need to do a sweep backwards on your D, your D flat, and your G. After you get control over Okay, now I'd like to give you some of my music to play and to chew on and have some fun with. Basically, there are a bunch of 2-5-1 progressions, which means in this particular case, I'm in the key of E-flat. The 2 chord is F minor 7, the 5 chord is B-flat 7, and the 1 chord is E-flat major 7, or E-flat e major 7, flat 5 in this case. Now, 2-5-1 progressions are common in all tunes. In all progressions, you're going to find a 2-5 somewhere. So they're probably the most important progression you should know and learn.
No, I have to put my glasses on so I can see the music. And I'll play a bunch of them for you. If you take a look at your screen, we'll go down them, we'll go down the line together. Okay. The first one is made, is constructed in fifths. Fourths. Now I take the exact same idea and I move it up a whole step and it outlines the major chord. So now we see that economy gets into the picture here. A simple 2 5 for F minor B flat 7 and then by moving it up a whole step we'll outline the major chord. In this case the major chord with the flat 5. So here's what it sounds like in time. 1, 2, 3, 4... Okay, let's go on to number two. One, two, three, four. Again, three, four. Notice how I'm picking. Pick this right hand out. Down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down. Now, one, two, three, four. This is number three. Uh, this one is constructed in fifths. This outlines the F minor seven and the B flat seven. Now, by moving the entire shape up a whole step, it'll outline the E flat major. And in this case, E flat major seven flat five. So it sounds like this. In time would be one, two, three, four. Now, if I was to burn it, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Number four. Listen to it first. Fifths. Fourths, fifths, one, two, three, four. Number five is also built in fifths. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Okay. Number six. All fifths. One, two, three, four. Number seven is a two five one, but it has a tendency to be inside, outside, and inside, which means that the tonality on the B flat seven is going to be staggered with some altered notes. In this case, B natural, E natural, and A natural. Okay, the B is your flat nine, the A the E natural is your flat five, and the A natural is your major seven. And of course the A natural is not in the B flat seven chord, but in this case we're going towards something, and of course when you're going towards something, you can play a lot of in-between notes, non-chordal notes. So it sounds like this. I'll play it first. Now with rhythm. One, two, three, four. So there's a lick that can take you a little bit outside and still sound like you're playing uh, very melodic. How these ideas came about? Well, I would sit around practicing fourths and fifths, and I decided that I would try to gather some material that I could use instead of just playing exercises. And I find that any time you learn something, if you hang it on something, then you're able to remember it. If you just sit around playing licks all day, and you don't have anything to play them uh, into, feed them into, well, sometimes you may lose them. And this is the big complaint I hear over and over again. People are telling me, well, I practice all day, but I can't ever play them out. Well, the thing about it is you have to learn it. 
put it into a tune right away, put it into some 2-5 progression, do anything, but have it so that it's a reference, so that you can refer to it. Okay. Now then, we're going to play some 2 5 ones dealing with D minor, G7, and C. All right. Here's number one, real slow. things so that they're nice and smooth and you can get them up to tempo. Don't forget when things line up, sweep them so that you don't have to pick alternate pick, which is a little bit more difficult in situations like this. Uh, you have a lot of material to work with, and notice that a lot of the shapes are moved around. After you get familiar with the material, you'll notice that I repeated ideas. Some might be used for a minor chord, and then I use the same idea for a major chord. Well, that's just what I call economy. Uh, with ideas. You don't need a million ideas. You just have to know how to use the ideas you have, learn how to move them around. And these couple of pages will teach you how to do that. Get familiar with the music and start turning the music around your own way. Let it be yours. I'd like to speak to you now about the minor 251s. Now, the minor 2-5-1s come out of the harmonic minor scale, which means that the 2 chord is a minor 7 flat 5, the 5 chord is a dominant chord, possibly with the flat 9, and the 1 chord is minor. It could be minor 6, minor 7, 9, 11, or sharp 7. And in this case, we're going to deal with the B minor 7 flat 5, B7, or flat 9, and minor. So it's D minor 7 flat 5, E7, A minor. Now I have some specific uh, lines for you, but right now I'm just going to play a little bit so you can get an idea what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
talk about some specific examples now. Let's take them slow so that you can understand them and see the fingerings, and then we'll take them a little faster. Uh, let me do the first one by myself. B minor 7 flat 5, this time we start on F, go up a minor 3rd, go up a major 3rd, so the starting points, F, go up to A flat, go up to C, 1, 2, 3, 4, Another minus seven, two, five, one. five minutes to turn around and play around for yourself. And now I'd like to demonstrate in a very common progression that you'll recognize immediately if one from the real book uh, how the sweeps work, how the two fives work when you put them into context and how your right brain works when you put them into context. <laughs>
Once again, we're going to go back into the scientific part about music. We're going to talk about how to build a better chord system for ourselves. Let's take a simple chord like a C major 7. Root, 5, major 7, 3 or 10. Simple everyday common chord. But when we begin to move fingers around, we begin to get a lot of uh, adjustments and a lot of alteration. For instance, let's just take the B string now. We string our fourth fingers on. And we're going to move it up and down, ascend and descend. Okay, if we move the E to F, it gives us a new sound. You can think of this as some kind of a C major 11 or actually some kind of an F major 7 flat 5. If we raise the F to F sharp, we have a C major 7 with a flat 5. Now let's get back to where we started. Let's lower the E to E flat. Now we have a C major, C minor with a major 7. If we lower the E flat to D, we have a C major 9. If we lower the D 
G to D flat. We have what I call the movie chord, Friday the 13th chord. Like a C major with a flat nine. I don't know where you would use it, but put it someplace. If you lower the D flat to C, you have a C major seven. What makes it so nice is you have that second. Now, stop at that chord for a minute and start building from that chord. You've got a real powerful chord, right? Look for the flat five of that chord. Lower the G to G flat. What happens if you put the A in the bass? Wait a minute. Let me lower the G to G flat. Now... Looks like some kind of A minor 6, too. Or A minor 9 with the 6. Or A minor 13. That means we can put an A in the bass. Right. So, just move your C to A. And you've got a real nice fat A minor uh, 6. Or A minor 13. Or actually some kind of D chord. Put the D in the bass. Have a D13. Add the F up on top. Got a really nice sounding D13 with a sharp 9. If you think of it without the G, you've got an F, F sharp minor 11 flat 5. Put the F sharp in the bass. Just by moving one simple finger got me into all those new chord changes. Now let's get back to where we started. This time we're going to move the G string. We're going to ascend with the G and descend with the G. So here we are again. C, G, B natural, C. We raise the B natural to C. You have an everyday C major chord. Raise the C to C sharp. And you got some kind of a C chord. C, C, I, I think of it as C7 flat 9, although there's no B flat in it. But it could be thought of it as a C7. C major flat 9, C7 flat 9. Okay, one more. C sharp to D. C major 9. Okay, go back to where you started. Lower the B to B flat. You have C7. Lower the A. The B flat to A. C major 6. C with a sharp 5. Open G. C major. Let's get back to C7 again. Anytime you have a dominant chord, you can alter that dominant chord. So, if you raise the C7 and make the E F sharp, now you have C7 with the flat 5. Get back to where you started. Lower the G to G flat. There's another C7 flat 5. So you have two altered chords from the dominant. You can make a 13 out of this, too, by raising the G to A. Now you have a C13 with sharp 11. And add the 13 on top. Okay, get back to where you started. Let's take the D string. You can raise the G to G sharp. You got a C major with a sharp 5. All right, the G sharp to A. C major 13. Get back to where you started. Lower the G to G flat. G major 7 flat 5. Lower the... Lower the F, G flat to F. And you have some kind of an F major chord, actually. You have an F major 7 with a flat 5. Lower the F to E. C major. This is an interesting chord because it has... E flat and E in it. It's another one of those movie chords. Then release E flat to D. You have C major. Now, once again, get the normal position. Raise C to C sharp. Change the chord now. Now you have a C sharp minor 7 flat 5. You raise the C to D. And you have some kind of a C major chord, C major, C major 9. Or E minor, E minor 7. 
has a D sharp, minor major, D minor with the major seven. Go up to E, you have E minor. This also can be thought of as C, E minor six. C major seven. D in the bass, E major seven. Movie chord. Some of them get very muddy, but the idea is that when you begin to move fingers on any chord, you're going to change the chord, and you're going to start to find new chords. Now, remember that because the guitar is set up in, in sets of fours sometimes, and in this case it is, root major seven, root five major seven, three, and you can get the same thing up here, root five major seven, three. So everything I did here, moving all my fingers around, I can do exactly up here. You have one more set to work with. You can get down to bottom. Root five major seven three. Start raising E to F, F to F sharp, and so on. Moving all your fingers just as I did with the first chord shape. So you've got plenty of chord, new chords to work with. Well, I'd like to thank everybody associated with the REH company, especially my good friend Don Mock, who always encouraged me to. Go ahead and write books and do videos. Roger. And I'd like to talk, thank Martine Mayo, who uh, got all of this together, all this nice uh, background and cameras and what, whatever. One of the most important things you can do is listen a lot. Whoever you love, listen. Listen to these people over and over again and get a feeling for what they're doing. Imitate them. Wear the same kind of socks. Sometimes that helps. You know, same kind of hairdo, whatever. Listen, play, absorb. Be thankful you have some talent, patience. You have to go, you have to take your time. Well, it doesn't come easy. And it comes when it's ready, not when you're ready. You might practice all day long and think, oh boy, I should be a genius. I'll work that way. It comes when it's ready. To build it step by step. It doesn't come in a year or two. Comes in, a, comes in many years. Comes after many years. So I'm sure I'll see you someplace on some gig. So come up and say hello and let me know if you like this or not. I hope you got something out of it. Goodbye. <laughs>
Thank you.